Greetings, gamers. I'm Bedrock. And I'm Dusklight. And you're listening to Very Good Music, a VGM podcast. And yeah, as you heard in the intro, and if you had forgotten or just skipped last episode, Shukapau is not with us this week. Uh, Shukapau is working on some end of year stuff for school, but I oh instead, <laughs> I instead, don't call your brother that, uh, have our residence family cat experts in on this feline filled episode. Back again for episode five, it's Dusk Lights. Hey, everybody! Hey, good to have you back. So, yeah, I told Dusk that if she did something, she could pick either the first or last track of the episode. I don't remember what it was, and I don't think she even remembered this. But then tonight she was like, can I pick the first episode? No. That's not what you said. That's not what I said. she was like, can I pick the first track? And I said, yeah, sure. So, Yeah. You're going to pick the first track. Uh, but first, what are we talking about tonight? You made me put your ice cream bowl in the sink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had you rinse out my ice cream bowl. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, wait, what did you say? Wait. Now everybody's going to wonder. I had Blue Bell Cookie Two-Step Ice Cream. It's a blend of cookies and cream and chocolate chip cookie dough, and it's delicious. And it wasn't a very big bowl, because I, I don't need a very big bowl of ice cream. Blue Bell's the best. Blue Bell is the best, and not just because we live in Texas. Now we're off on a tangent. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so I asked you, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about cats. Duh. Not ice cream. Yeah, we are talking about not just cats, uh, as ice I specified. Cats. No, not ice cream kitty from the new Ni- yeah. Ninja Turtles show. It's not a new one anymore. It's the second oldest one now. Second newest one. I don't know. Now we're talking about Ninja Turtles. The whole night can't be like this because we have got a jam-packed episode. In addition to your seven tracks and my seven tracks and the blooper reel, we have also got... Technically five, but really four track submissions from other folks. But we're not just talking about like cats in games. We're talking about whole games that are about cats. Yeah. So uh, we also may not have a whole lot to say about the games themselves because we don't know a whole <laughs> lot about a lot of these games. Yeah. But there are a few of them we'll be able to talk some about. Uh, Dusk, why don't you go ahead, start us off. What are we going to be listening to first? All right. The first track that I'm going to be playing tonight is called World 3 from Purrs in Heaven.
That was World 3 from Purrs in Heaven, composed by Pao Damia Riera and released in 2020 for the Switch, developed by Pixelbone Studio and published by Enjoy Up Games. You can find a link to the composer's website uh, in the show notes on our YouTube channel, and I'll be um, doing that for most of the tracks tonight, so I may say it again a few times, but I won't say it every time. That was very nice. Yeah, it was. So, how did you find this track? Um, listening to songs on the playlist you made. <laughs> yeah, because I made a cat-related games playlist that was really, really, really long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we listened through to almost all the tracks um, a while back, and then this week I just had Dusk go through and pick out the ones she wanted, and it did not take very long. Why, did you, why do you think you picked this one? Um, well, uh... In the first few, like, um, 30 seconds or so, uh, it sounds a lot like some uh, classical music. Yeah, it's really picking up some Beethoven. Yeah, Um, and it sounds really nice. And, like, as it gets into it, it's, like, really soft and pretty or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I guess. It really is. It's a nice kind of... Nice, calm way to start the episode, and, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes cats can be like this, just kind of quiet, kind of... Snoozing. Snoozing most of the day. Yeah, this would be a nice, nice napping song. <laughs> Very cool. And what did we find out about Purrs in Heaven? Um, well, I found this review from a quick Google search, uh, and it says, um... In Purrs in Heaven, you will take control of poor Lana, who has died after an accident. She ends up before Yama, judge of the heavens, who is charmed by her purring, which is why he tells her about the gate of redemption. The good news is that you can help her come back to life. There is a series of tests she needs to over- to overcome, and if she manages to complete them, she'll be able to defeat the guardians who are keepers of the three pieces of her soul. So, sounds like a pretty existential game. Is it like a puzzle game? I think I remember seeing reviews of this, or maybe the preview on the Switch eShop. Uh... Hmm. I think it is. Anyway, y'all can look it up if you like it. Uh, the composer has all of the soundtracks up on YouTube. You can watch the waveforms and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. Not sure what else um, Riera has composed, but you can check out their website. Like I said, link is in the show notes. Next, we're going to be moving to an artist that we have heard quite a bit on this show. Recently, I had the privilege of being on the BG Mania podcast, and the host, Brian, and I discussed one of our favorite composers, Mr. Jake Kaufman. Uh, Jake has a really extensive background, and I'm sure that we will be covering him fairly soon, probably sometime this year. But this particular track is something that you may not think of when you first think of Jake Kaufman. It's not one of the boisterous, fun, really exciting tunes that you might get out of, like, Shovel Knight or Shantae or Mighty Switch Force. This is from one of Jake's early soundtracks, from 2005, actually. A PlayStation 2 game called The Legend of K, in which you follow around an anthropomorphic cat warrior as he tries to save his kingdom from the gorilla invaders or something like that. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what this area is like, if it's a friendly place or a neutral place or what, but I'm pretty sure you can figure out what kind of denizens live here because our cat warrior is visiting the village of Hair Tree.
that was Hair Tree, composed by Jay Kaufman for The Legend of K. Once again released in 2005 for PS2, developed by Neon Studios and published by Capcom. What did you think of that, Dusk? It was pretty cool. I liked the bouncy... Yeah. Uh, if you had to put this in a movie that we've seen, like an animated movie, which one do you think it would fit in most? Hmm... Uh, I don't know. So I was thinking of Kung Fu Panda, like the whole time oh, I listened yeah. to this. Oh, yeah. It's definitely got those Asiatic sounds. I really like those instruments. And if I had just played this for you, would you have thought Jake Kaufman at all? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know too much about, like, the composers and, like, what they usually sound Yeah, I guess that's true. Like. You haven't listened to as, as many as much VGM as Shuka Pao has, but, like, you know, Sean, like, you've said stuff sounds like Shantae, or, yeah. you know, sounds like Undertale, or things like that, so you know a little bit, but obviously I know Undertale is not Jake Hoppin, it's Toby Fox, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was really cool. Again, don't know too much about The Legend of K. From what I remember, Brian said it was kind of a, a Zelda clone, and it was just okay. It wasn't horrible, but it also wasn't, like, Zelda, so. Yeah. Um, Sounds like it might be worth a, a watch if you're interested in that kind of thing. But you know what I'm interested in? What? Hearing what your next track is. Woo! <laughs> Segway! Um, anyway, uh, my next track is called Theo, and it's from a game called Brightpaw. was Theo from Brightpaw, composed by Will Bedford and released in 2020, last year. That was developed by Radical Forge and published by Rogue Games for the Switch and mobile devices and also Windows, and I believe other computers too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dusk, tell us a little bit about Brightpaw. Um, so the description on the um, Nintendo thingy... Uh, Switch eShop page. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> it says, Murder, mystery, puzzles, and cats. A gunshot rattles the house, and now your owners are dead. Clearly murdered. But why? And where's the culprit? These answers won't be easy to come by, especially because you're the family cat. Guided by the omniscient narrator, play as the fe feline hero Theo as he embarks on an epic adventure to solve the crime and exact revenge on the evildoers. Oh. Um, so it's, this is so, the main character's theme. Yeah. So it's a puzzle game... Uh, it's apparently fully voiced, and there's a bunch of different, like, collectibles and stuff. Hmm. Sounds like it could be fun. I gotta say, I did not think violent revenge story when I <laughs> <laughs> and murder mystery when I heard this track. Yeah, the, the soft piano mixed with the string synth yep. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool. Again, don't know a whole lot about the composer here. Not sure what else he has done, but you can find out more on his website. And let me see. I'm going to follow that up with 
my one pick tonight that's actually not my pick. Uh, since Shukapau is not joining me on this episode, I did say that Shukapau could pick a track for me because I knew there was a track that he really wanted to bring. I told him I could let him cheat a little bit because this track is from Bowser's Fury, which was the bonus content released with Super Mario 3D World Deluxe when it was ported to Switch this year. Bowser's Fury, if there had been a Cat Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey, this area of uh, that where Bowser's Fury takes place would be it. <laughs> yeah. Everything is cats. Um, the trees are cats. The enemies are cats. Bowser actually is not a cat, which is interesting. Yeah, he's um, a weird thing. He's like a kaiju. <laughs> but when it's time to beat him, you turn into a kaiju-sized Super Saiyan Mario cat. <laughs> cat Mario. <laughs> yes, but totally. You also have to run around the island and rescue little kittens, like you rescued baby penguins in Super Mario 64. Yeah, everything is cats. Including this mountain called Mount Magmeow. And that is what we are going to listen to now. Again, that was Shukapau's pick for the episode, Mount Magmeow from Bowser's Fury. This soundtrack was composed by a combination of Koji Kondo, Mahito Yokota, and Toru Minagishi. Some really, really classic Nintendo composers there, of course led by the father of Mario music himself, Koji Kondo. And man, this was fun. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was, that was what, Dusklight? Oh, you don't know the tagline. That's right. I kind of just, just huh? threw you in there. What? Uh, once an episode, I will ask Shukapau, and that's what? Or I'll segue it in somehow, and he'll say, very good music. <laughs> so I'll that, have to, is, that is what it sounds like. <laughs> yep. I'll have to see if I can um, maybe work it in a little later in the episode. So it's all <laughs> impromptu. But yeah, what did you think? It was great. I, I like the bounciness. Yeah. You like bouncy things. <laughs> Dude. Like my cat. Yeah, let's talk about why I introduced you as the family cat experts. Because I like cats. You have loved cats for so long. Yeah. Forever. Forever. (laughs) And finally, three years ago today, as we record, we brought home our first cats. Yep, and she's kidding. actually, she's sitting on the table right behind me. Yep, her name is Misty. She's a little tortoise shell. I have posted her online a couple of times in a couple of my Discord forums, but she's a very, very pretty kitty. Maybe I'll have to work her and Artemis into the art for this show somehow. Oh, that yeah. That'll be fun. Uh, we'll have to get a good picture of Artie. But, yeah, so tell us about Misty and Artemis a little bit. Um, so... Misty is, she's, you know, a little tortoiseshell. She has green eyes and, um... She's like six years old? Yeah, she's seven years old now. Oh, because she was four when we got her. Yeah. Yeah. So she's old. Yep, Um, she's getting up there in cat years. Yeah. Uh, she, she's pretty, like, quiet and reserved. Yeah, she's pretty shy, but she's very sweet. Yeah. And then Artemis... 
She is um, kind of a tabby. She's like two or three. Yeah, she's like two. Um, and we got her this last Christmas, uh, yeah. Christmas 2020. So we haven't had her very long. Go ahead. So she's like a sort of tannish, grayish tabby um, with some dark, dark brown stripes. White on her tummy and paws. Yeah. Uh, she's... Um, she's feistier. Yeah. <laughs> she likes to attack this little fluff ball yeah. that we have. She likes to chase things, then she'll, she'll pounce on it and carry it around in her mouth. She also likes to attack feet. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes hands, and she'll like grab you and hug your hand and nibble on you. She's she, she's just a little kitten. She is. She's she's bigger than Misty, which is funny, but she is. She's a little kitten. She's also um, had babies. Yes, she has. And cool story in the shelter that we adopted her from. At, right after her babies left, um, after right after she had weaned them, another group of orphaned kittens came in, and so she basically adopted them and weaned them too. So, or um, they nursed with her and then. She's a little mama cat. Yeah, she's a little mama cat. And she's also a little lap cat. And uh, she likes to curl up in our laps and get petted and stuff. Really, really sweet kitties. Anyway, yep. they're both technically Dusks, and Dusk is in charge of taking care of them. Um, yeah. Oh, Shukapau is poking his head in. Uh, hey, come say hi. And show me show me this thing you wanted to show me. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. oh this is a text from RJ. Yes, um, RJ sent me a text. And Chukapau just had to come show me for some reason. Oh, that's why. RJ says, I got vaccinated earlier, and now the pain is catching up to me. Is this how Dunban felt in Sword Valley? <laughs> All right, so I just recently... <laughs> yeah, we didn't have much of a uh, an intro, so I've been playing a lot of Cineblade Chronicles lately. I actually beat the main quest just this week. Um, and at the beginning of that game, Dunban, one of the secondary characters, is defending the Homs, which are the humans in this game, in a place called Sword Valley, and he gets very badly injured by the sword that he is wielding, which is a mystical sword called the Monado. And so, yeah, his his whole right arm is useless for the whole game because of that. But hopefully RJ's right arm is not completely useless after his COVID shot. <laughs> <laughs> After I beat Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I picked up another game that I ordered way back in January and was delivered just yesterday on April 30th when it came out, which Picture is Picture game! Picture game! New Pokemon Snap! Woo! All right. And I've been enjoying it so much, I've already taken over 500 pictures in the 24 hours that I have, you know, since I started the game. <laughs> uh, Dusk, what have you been playing lately? Um, I don't know. I haven't actually really been playing very many games. I beat Undertale, yeah, like, again. last week or so. Oh, and then you played around with that Fox game. The, oh, yeah. The indie um, game I downloaded. Uh, what was it called? The First Tree. Yeah, The First Tree. Which sounds like it's also a game about, like, depression and reconciling with your family or something. Yeah, um, I haven't actually beat it. I don't really know what to do in the place that I'm in right now. <clears throat> it's very interesting. It's like an open-world puzzle game where you're playing as this fox, and you will you run around and, like, dig up what memories. turn out to be memories. The narrator's memories. But it's interesting. I would invite anybody to check it out. It doesn't seem like a very long game. There are some puzzles that aren't super intuitive, but um, anyway, so yeah. But you've mostly been up to, like, drawing and baking and stuff yeah. like that. I made a cake. You did. You made a cake for the birthday party that you shared with your twin sisters who just turned seven. You turned 14. You're as old as they are combined. <laughs> uh -huh. For the last year. Fear me. I am teenager. Yeah, you've been a teenager for a little while now. We've been feeling it, for sure. <laughs> and we love you so much. Uh, but before we, we get off into Rambly Town too much more, what is your next track going to be? Uh, my next track Let me guess, is... it's going to be another nice, soft, sweet piano theme. Actually, no. <gasps> it's from a game called Cat Quest. Ooh. And the title is A Kitten More Evil Than You Could Possibly Imagine.
And that was a kitten more evil than you could possibly imagine <laughs> from Cat Quest. This was composed by Brian Havey, also known as Z-1. That's Z-M-I-N-U-S-O-N-E, Z-1. And this was released in 2017 for multiple platforms. It was developed by the Gentle Bros and published by P-Cube. Uh, so, yeah, there was, there was some nice soft piano in there. Yeah, but it was minor piano. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was definitely that was a villainous tune. I like that. That was good. Yeah. So, Cat Quest. I've actually seen this on the eShop a couple of times. Haven't picked it up. We picked up a couple of sort of cat-like games, but not this one. Um, what did you find out about this game? So, um, on the Nintendo thing, uh, it says... Cat Quest is an open-world RPG set in the possum world of cats. Leap into a grand adventure in pursuit of the evil Drakoth and your catnapped sister. Explore Felengard's huge overworld map, risk life and limb delving into dungeons for epic loot, and lend a paw to a fu- furry cast of characters in a flurry of side quests. So, lots of cat puns, as you can tell. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't gotten this game. It sounds like exactly the kind of game I would like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, we'll have to check this out. And I think that a sequel fairly recently also came out. And also composed by uh, Z-1. But this was really cool. Really cool. Nice change of pace. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to see about picking up this game. This next one... I don't think we are going to pick up. I did look up some video of it, and it looks really derpy and funny, <laughs> but it doesn't look like something I'd want to spend money on. This next track is also kind of a change of pace. It comes from a game called The Battle Cats. Uh, but this song, I'm kind of cheating a little bit here, because this song originally came from a different game series. One thing that The Battle Cats did a lot was crossover with other game series. Uh, they had, like... Um, Street Fighter and Evangelion, um, lots of different like themes in their little this little puzzle battle game thing they did, and this one is a crossover from a predominantly Japanese property that we actually have heard on this show before, back on the Five Finger Fanfare episode where I played a track I'd first heard on the Super Mercado Bros podcast. This comes to us from Jikyu Powerful Pro Baseball Eight, the last game. This track is called just Power Pro Baseball Collab Battle Music, and again, this was featured in The Battle Cats. Power Pro Baseball Collab Battle Music from the Battle Cats. Um, unknown composer, possibly Shigeru Araki or Tomoaki Hirono, because they were regular composers on the Power Pool Pro series. Uh, but this was released in 2014 on mobile and was developed and published by Ponos Corporation. P O N O S. Uh, Dusk, what did you think of that track? It was cool. It reminded me of kind of like a western. Yeah, I definitely had that. The do 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 do
with yeah. the western stuff. Um, and actually that little part there also reminded me of Gravity Falls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that Mabel, Mabel would like this game. This game sounds like something that you could possibly see in a Gravity Falls episode. <laughs> And it looks like it too. It's kind of terrifying, actually. Uh, so, weirdly cute cats rampage across the world. This is from the Google Play description. Command your cats with simple controls in a battle through space and time. No need to register to develop your own cat army. Battle with all the cats. Uh, it has a super simple battle system, a super simple leveling system, and it's super simple fun. The point of the game is to collect glorious treasures while you take over the world, recruit dozens of rare and exotic cats question mark and create the ultimate feline army and yeah some of these cats look like punching bags with legs there's one that looks like it it's like a cat with a man's body but the man's body has arms that reach all the way to the ground almost this sounds terrifying there's one that look it has like kangaroo legs and then a cat head and nobody it, it's it, nobody it, 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 then there's a fish with legs and a cat head it, it's really really weird looking <laughs> but there's actually a lot of really good music <laughs> in this game soundtrack so uh check it out i guess maybe if you're brave <laughs> but anyway yeah uh dusk what have you got for us next um the next theme i have is from aqua kitty and it's called Creamy Cove. That was Creamy Cove from, well, Aqua Kitty, but we'll hear more about that in a second. This was composed by Mark Day, also known as Electric Cafe, who was also the creator of this game. It was released originally in 2014 and has since been sort of redone, reissued, sequelized, and put out on multiple platforms, and it was published by TikiPod. And Dusk, what have you found out about this game? Well, I had some trouble actually finding the game because I wasn't sure if it was uh, Milk Mine Defender or Astro Aqua Kitty, but I had decided that it's probably Milk Mine Defender since the theme is called Creamy Cove and. Cream, milk, yeah, dairy, yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> um, and so the description says. Aqua Kitty is a fast-paced, retro-styled submarine arcade shooter with optional two-player co-op. Which also sounds really fun. Like, it's one of these retro games, and the soundtrack is definitely retro-inspired. I heard a lot of, like, old PC game-style music, uh, some sort of Genesis sound in there. Yeah. 
And um, Volt Supreme, who I talked about last week on the, the second train episode, uh, is the host of Volt Supreme Synth VGM Dream Stream Machine podcast and does a lot of other stuff. He recently interviewed the composer of Catlandia, Crisis at Fort Pawprint, Ryan Steele, who is also a patron of this show. And we're not going to be hearing anything from Catlandia today because Shukapau and I actually also interviewed Ryan, and you'll be hearing our interview with him in a couple of weeks as you listen to this episode. And after Volts uh, interviewed him, well, before Volts interviewed him, I knew that was coming, and I thought that Volts was also going to be talking with Ryan about music from cat games. And so I thought, oh, cool, I wonder if there's going to be any overlap. And then Volts decided to turn that into part two of this podcast episode, and it's going to be coming out later. So his interview with Ryan is coming out before my interview, but his cat music episode is coming out after our cat music episode, which is weird. But anyway, I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of overlap. There's not a whole lot of sense in what we're playing tonight, but this one, I could hear him bringing something from Aqua Kitty because there's definitely some synthy stuff <laughs> on this soundtrack. This was another one where the whole soundtrack was just really cool. I definitely recommend you all check out the soundtrack to this game and Electric Cafe's other work. But you know what? We are already seven tracks deep. Uh, it's going pretty quickly tonight. Yeah. We don't ramble quite as much as Shukapau and I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to hear how that, how that comes out on the audio. But I'm having fun. We're bringing some, some different stuff. It's kind of a differently paced episode. And you know what? Cats are differently paced kind of creatures. <laughs> they're, they're the weirdest mammals in the world. But... I think yeah, I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> well, uh, no, there's a lot of places pretty... are strong contenders. I uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. And before anyone corrects us, in volts, you can back me up. It is not platypi. The plural of platypus is platypuses. That is actually accurate. We learned that on Animal Logic. <laughs> Yay! All right. <clears throat> well, since we're halfway through, I think it's time to go ahead and play our three tracks that were brought to us by patrons and listeners, and. Um, Volts actually brought two tracks, but I'm going to combine them into one. And you know what? Since I've been talking about him, we're going to go ahead and lead with this. This is from uh, Doraemon Nobita no Shin Makai Daiboken. We could not find the composer at all. Like, it, between the two of us, could not find it. We also know the name of these tracks or where they play in the game, but they're two fairly short little tracks, and so I decided to go ahead and play both of them. We'll listen to them now. It's tracks 21 and 33, and we'll hear Volts' testimonial when we come back. And a really, really fun little track, followed by a really intense little track. That was pretty cool stuff right there. From Doraemon Nobita no Shin Makai Daibuken. That was 
Music 21 and Music 33. This game was released in Japan only in 2007 for the DS. It was developed by Global Entertainment and published by Sega, who I think put out a lot of the Doraemon games. Uh, Dusk, are you familiar at all with Doraemon? Uh, no. Like, do you even know, like, what it is? Like, no. Doraemon, well, here, I'll go ahead and read, um, <clears throat> read Volts' little testimonial here. My, uh, Australian accent was a pretty big hit, yeah, <laughs> apparently, so I'm gonna try again. Volts said I sounded a little bit English, so we'll see if we can do this. <clears throat> Good eye, mates. When I was putting together my own cat episode earlier this year and I was looking for tunes, I plowed through a huge number of Doraemon soundtracks. Doraemon is a cartoon robot cat character and within Japan it is an absolutely huge franchise that's been going since the 60s I think. I think there's over 50 games that have been made in lots of films, anime and manga. Pretty sure he'd pronounce it correctly. Anyway, uh, most of the music was underwhelming. I had already played a heap of tunes from Doraemon 4 for the Super Famicom on an old episode, but I found this soundtrack, Doraemon Nobita no Shin Makai Daibuken for the Nintendo DS. It's really good. Yeah, that sounded British. <laughs> that was really British. Yeah. It, I, I can't. I can't. It's really good. I believe it's a card battle style game. All the music is fantastic, but unfortunately I can't find much info on the soundtrack or who composed it. But here are two unnamed, very short and sweet tunes that are quite different. I hope you enjoy one or both of them. Well, Volts, I think it's safe to say that we did. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of those? Um, they were really cool. They were also, like, super different. They were. They didn't really sound like the same game, but you know what? Props to the composer. <laughs> I did find out that this game was based on a movie that came out the same year. Again, there are there are so many, like, Doraemon properties. It's... I can't even think of something similar in the U.S. that has been that popular for that long and is still ongoing. It's yeah. maybe Superman, but... <laughs> Like it's crazy. It's 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 really something or over maybe there. Maybe like Zelda for over on the video game. On side. the video game side, yeah, yeah, Zelda or Mario. Um, Mario, yeah, which is crazy because Mario is like who you think of as the video game character. Yeah. Which, but as in other media, I can't really think of something that's stuck around that much, like consistently. Doraemon is like it's huge, um, but. Yeah, uh, the movie in in English, and there is an English translation of it, I don't know if it's official or not, but it was called Doraemon Nobita's New Great Adventure into the Underworld, which, splicing together a whole lot of different translation techniques, is the closest I could get to also what Nobita no Shin Makai Daibokin comes out to. So, Volts, thank you very much for that. Our next listener track is going to come to us from The Last Recon. And we will hear Daryl's testimonial when we come back as well. But this is from Black Panther, which has nothing to do with the Marvel comic. Uh, although <laughs> Daryl does give a shout out in his testimonial. But this is from a 1987 Konami arcade game. And once again from Black Panther, this is Stage 1.
That was Stage 1 from Black Panther, the 1987 arcade game released by Konami. And I just spent like 5-10 minutes looking and I can't find a composer for this track either. Ah. Um, this was before uh, some of the heavy hitters like Michiru Yamane started working at Konami. Um, and I didn't find it credited to any of the big name Konami composers. So. Anyone out there who knows who composed Black Panther for the arcade, let us know. I did find out that this is apparently a horizontal beat-em-up and platforming game. The protagonist is a Black Panther with claws that can be used to slash, and the other button is used to jump. I think that you're actually like a robot panther. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the goal is to eliminate enemies or overcome obstacles at full speed. So you can, like, you have different ways that you can try to get through each level, but each level does still end with a final boss. So, uh, <clears throat> they're all right. So I had to look very deep and came across this. I have never played this game, but this soundtrack is incredible. At first I thought it was based on the Black Panther comic book character, Wakanda Forever, but it instead features a cybernetically enhanced panther in a beat-em-up style game. Hope you and Young Dusk enjoy this, and the clip of Kenny Omega coming out to Megalovania. <laughs> <laughs> we did enjoy that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then the video was really, really on point that that uh, that was on the, the big, like, what do they call those? The big something Tron screens. Man. It's been way too long since I've watched any kind of sports. But Jumbotron, yeah, uh, there was a video on the Jumbotron that played before Kenny Omega came out and it was all Undertale stuff. Oh, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was really cool. And this track was pretty cool. It definitely was something I could hear like a cybernetic panther killing guys too. It was, <laughs> uh, uh, definitely had a metallic sound to it. Nice rhythm. I could see these instruments being a little bit harsh for some people, but the last Recon uh, definitely knows his VGM and knows how to how to pull the best traits out of a track. And this one, I think, definitely just the rhythm and that hard rocking driving feel make this track what it is. Our next patron uh, who recommended something for the show also really knows his VGM and uh, he's been on the show before we we're talking about Skeletroy the thrash Canadian and this time he brought a track from a game that I, I had several tracks from this game on my list and eventually I just ended up not really picking them you actually listened to quite a few of these as well and you weren't a huge fan of any of them I don't think you you like the retro chip sounds as much as I do yeah but this one is from a property that I just love the idea of. And I have played a little of this game on an emulator because I don't think it was ever officially brought over to the States. Uh, there has been some of this IP that has made its way over here. And when it did, it was called Samurai Pizza Cats. Uh, it's also known as Ninja Cats. And in Japan, it is just Kyatu Ninja Teande. This was released for the Famicom in 1991, and we are going to be listening to the final boss cutscene, which is also called Ready to Fight.
That was Final Boss, Cutscene, also called Ready to Fight, from Ninja Cat, or Kyato Ninden Tiandi, or Samurai Pizza Cats. That was released in 1991 for the Famicom, only in Japan, although it has been patched and ported over uh, via emulator, and it was published and developed by Tecmo. Tecmo has a really annoying habit of, I don't know if it made its composers do this or if the composers themselves did it, but they often went by pseudonyms, and that makes it really hard sometimes to track down who did what, when, and this happened a lot in retro VGM because, uh, well, in a lot of, um, not just music, but a lot of game uh, development areas, people would actually sometimes be kidnapped and the game companies would be forced to give out information to get them back, uh, like a hostage situation. Um, because in Japan, they take this stuff very seriously. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's so that's a lot of times why people used uh, pseudonyms. But I found in a couple of different places that this game was composed by Ryuichi Nitta, who is one of the big Tecmo composers. So we'll go with that. Once again, this was brought to us by Skeletroy. Skeletroy says, and I'm going to see if I can do my Canadian accent here, even though he doesn't really have a very strong Canadian accent, so this is going to be a lot more than he, he really sounds, as anybody who listened to my episode with him knows. Alright, so I beat Ganon in like 70-ish percent of Breath of the Wild, and now I can pull myself away from it long enough to get that cat version of the theme song done. Also, uh, here's my pick for the cat episode. Kato Ninja Tiandi. I can't do other words in <laughs> other accents. Although I did used to walk around my office a lot speaking Spanish in a Canadian accent. And wow. there was a, uh, a buddy I had there from Minnesota and it always tripped him out. Um, <laughs> but Samurai Pizza Cats for, for the Famicom. This is the final boss theme versus Karamaru, or the Bad Bird. So... Not, not a great Canadian <laughs> accent there, but there you go. You get a little Australian, a little Canadian, and just one big cheesy dad. <laughs> what did you think of that, Dusk? Um, not the accent, but the music. Do, 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 do. It was bouncy. <laughs> I think that that part was my favorites. The the melody was really cool. It was really strong. This could have been a uh, like a Mega Man theme. Yeah. And yep, once again, bouncy, which means you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is really good stuff. Tecmo. There was some good music on Tecmo games. Uh, one of my favorite games from last year was actually the Tecmo Bowl uh, like win music that was um, recommended by one of my best buddies uh, who goes by Neverender. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you, Volts and Daryl and Troy for giving us those things. And I also want to thank the composer of this next track because she is a really, really cool person. Um, she has been on the Rhythm and Pixels podcast several times. I think she's their most like recurring um, guest host. Uh, this is Shell Wong, and you can check out Shell's website at shellwongaudio.com. Uh, you can also check out the Kickstarter for this game, which is called Whisker Squadron. And we're going to talk a little more about it when we come back and about why this was kind of a special inclusion in this episode. But for now, let's go ahead and listen to Farrah Lunar Canyon, Maine, from Whisker Squadron, composed by Shell Wong.
that was Pharaoh Looter Canyon, Maine, from the upcoming Whisker Squadron, composed by Shell Wong, and this game is being developed for Windows by Flipfly. And this is kind of a special pick because I just recently heard the main theme of this game on the Rhythm and Pixels podcast, on which Shell is a very recurring guest, and I heard about this game on Rhythm and Pixels, and it looks like Star Fox, but with cats. <laughs> and the levels are procedurally generated. You know what that means, Dusk? They're randomly generated levels. Yeah. So, like, the landmarks and everything are, yeah, like, generated from scratch. Anywho, um, I lost my train of thought. Huh. Anyway, so yeah, Star Fox, but with procedurally generated levels and uh, with cats. So th that makes it better, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's better with cats, except for soup. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this was a really, really cool track. I like just the synthy, bouncy goodness, to come back to what you were saying before. <laughs> it's a bouncy track. But the do 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 I really like the rhythm of this. Sounds like a nice space shooter. So the Kickstarter is actually closed as of time of recording, so you can't officially support the game anymore, at least on Kickstarter. But you can go check it out, and you can support Shell at Shell Wong Audio. You can, as I mentioned already in the show, and seem to be mentioning continuously, even though I said I wouldn't. You can find a link to her work in the show notes. All right, but I have rambled enough about that. Oh, thank you, Shell, by the way, for sending me the link to your SoundCloud and sending me a nice um, high quality version of this track. Uh, appreciate that very much. Shout out to Shell Wong. And yeah, so what are you gonna be playing next from your list? Okay, next um, is from a game called Calico for the Nintendo Switch, and it's from an area called the Witching Woods at night time. That was the Witching Woods Night Theme, also called Calling, from the game Calico. This was composed by John Smith, aka Slide20XX. This was released in 2020 for multiple platforms and was developed and published by Peachy Keen Games. So, Dusk, why did you pick this track? Um, I picked it because I liked the kind of mystic theme. It definitely sounds like woods. Spooky. It sounds like nighttime. It sounds spoopy. Spoopy. <laughs> so nice for uh, for witching woods. And this sounds like a cat creeping through the woods at night. Like if if this were like Peter and the Wolf, you know what that is? No. Peter and the Wolf is an old uh, musical song as opposed to non-musical song. Um where basically it like it tells a story through song and there's this little boy Peter who is going through the woods and he's got his own theme and then there are other animals that come along and each of them is also like has their own theme played by a particular instrument um and so each 
animal has a little song that goes along with it, and the melody and the instrument is supposed to sound like that. If there were a cat creeping through the woods at night in Peter and the Wolf, it would be uh, an echoey piano, and it would play this melody. <laughs> so this was very cool. Uh, did you look into Calico very much? What kind of game is this? Uh, so it's uh, for the N- N- Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and the description says, Calico is a day-in-the-life community sim game where you are given an important and adorable task. Rebuild the town's cat cafe and fill it with cute and cuddly creatures. You will journey to a small village filled with magical girls and other fantastical friends where you are placed in a char- where you are placed in charge of a rundown cat cafe. Build up your cafe by filling it with cute furniture, fun decorations, yummy pastries, and get it bustling with animals again. So... How have you not bought this game? I don't know. <laughs> it's got cats, it's got magical girls, it's a sim game. It seems like the kind of thing that you would enjoy. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. I have seen the arts. Um, the art looks very cool. Kind of a forward-thinking, body-positive type of thing. Um, the art actually reminds me a little bit of things like Steven Universe, stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but if the music, the rest of the music is anything like this, then definitely need to check out this soundtrack. Well, going from 2020 to a little bit older game, we don't really have any super old games on the list tonight, but this one comes from uh, almost the last century. (laughs) This game is from 2002, and this soundtrack is also pretty cool. If I had to bet, I would imagine that Rob from Rhythm and Pixels would really enjoy this soundtrack if he doesn't already know of it. But the name of the game is Blinks, with an X, the Time Sweeper. Uh, Blinks, the title character, is a cat, and he travels Mm -hmm. through time, And I believe the hub of his game is called Time Square, a play on Times Square in New York City. And that is the theme we are going to be playing right now. You are listening to Time Square from Blinks the Time Sweeper. This was composed by uh, Mariko Ananba and Keiichi Sugiyama. This was released in 2002 for the Xbox. It was developed by Artoon and published by Microsoft. Don't know much about this game beyond what I've already said. It looks like it would be kind of a platformer shooter type game, sort of in the vein of like Ratchet and Clank, uh, sort of a techno fused game, which this track definitely, you can hear the techno influence with some of those samples and sound effects and stuff like that. But, but a really, really cool theme. Not necessarily one I would pick for a hub world. Usually hub worlds are a little more chill. It's like something you could listen to for a while because you're going to be there for a bit and you're going to hear it off and on throughout the whole game. Yeah. 
But I could be wrong, it's totally conjecture on my part that this is a hub world, but if I were making a game about a time-traveling cat and there were a hub, I would probably call it Times Square, so. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of this track? Uh, it was bouncy. <laughs> How, how come you keep picking all the bouncy songs and I'm picking all the soft piano mystic songs? I don't know. I don't know. I guess uh, with you, Kapow, and I, we tend to pick things that have kind of an emphasis on melody. Uh, ambient stuff doesn't really come into play too much, but... I think that that's kind of cool that you're bringing that stuff to the show because it's a different flavor than what we usually have and it makes our songs kind of, you know, there's a little bit of a contrast there and so it's keeping our listeners' ears on their toes. <laughs> ears have toes. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. But that's cool. I like it. I'm digging it. What nice little piano ballad theme are you going to be playing for us next? Well, next is a theme from Cat Tales, which is really the only one of these games that I've actually played. <laughs> um, and I knew it was going to come on the list tonight. I think if you had your way, you might have picked the whole <laughs> yeah. list from Cat Tales because you yeah. love this game. But I did pick two songs from Cat Tales tonight. Very cool. And the first one I'm going to be playing is called the nostalgia theme. <laughs> All right, well, let's hear it. And that was the Nostalgia theme, which plays in the opening cutscene from Cat Tales. This game was composed by Tormod Garvin and was released in 2017 for the Switch and PC. And it was developed and published by Falcon Development, not to be composed with Falcom, which is the company that publishes the Ease games, among other things. But yeah, so more nice, quiet piano stuff. This one's kind of sad. Yeah, Why is it so sad. I hate the opening cutscene because um, so in the game when the cutscene plays, you're you know like a little kitty at the shelter, mm. and then this little girl and her mom comes and the girl takes you, you know, back and they adopt you. Yeah, and then I don't, I'm not even sure like what happens, but like the mom gets like mad and. She, they, she takes the kitty and abandons it on the side of the road. What? Yeah! Well, okay, so for anybody who doesn't know, Cat Tales is a game where you play uh, a cat who becomes a feral cat, and you, like, have territory that you have to defend with the rest of your tribe of cats, and you, like, go around and conquer different territories and fight cats, so it's about this cat, like, becoming an adventurer. It's sort of like Stardew Valley, but with cats, and <laughs> it's more about fighting than about just collecting stuff. Um, so, you stuff so, this is all, this is, like, sets up your character becoming this cool, awesome, adventurous cat. But yeah, yeah. that's, that's harsh, man. <laughs> like, why did you bring this track? <laughs> <laughs> because I like the theme. It is it is pretty. So is this is this theme like reused in the game, like in later parts, or is it only played in the cutscene? I'm pretty sure it's only played in the cutscene. I haven't really heard it. I haven't played Cat Tales in a little while. Mm -hmm. I've been doing other stuff. But... So it's not like Undertale, where there's like a motif that comes yeah. back in different things. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, uh, before we hear your next track from Cat Tales, which will be your last track of the night. Uh, we are going to hear my next track, 
I don't have a sad story to go with this because I have very little idea of how what this game is about, but it doesn't really sound sad. Um, in fact, instead of the cat getting abandoned, I think something actually happens to the owner in this one? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I think that might have been from, from, from earlier. Uh, well, anywho, um, I will come back and tell you all all about that after we listen to Claws and Effect from Cat Lateral Damage. That was Claws and Effect from Cat Lateral Damage, composed by Brandon Ellis, also known as City Fires, and this was released in 2013 for Windows, Linux, and Mac. It was developed by Chris Chung and composed by Firehose Games. You can check out City Fires' website in the show notes, and yeah, what did you think of this track, Dusk? I liked it. It was bouncy. <laughs> I think we've found your adjective for tonight. Do you think cats are bouncy? Uh, some are. Yeah, they're kind of pouncy. Bouncy, <laughs> bouncy. Fun, 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 fun. Anyway, uh, you think they would bounce if we, like, threw them off the roof? <laughs> I'm just How kidding. How dare you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so what did we find out about cat lateral damage? Uh, well, I have the Wikipedia thing right here. Yay. Da -da -da -da, Wikipedia. <laughs> anyway, it says Cat Lateral Damage is a first person video game in which the player plays as a cat. The goal of the game is to knock as many of the player's characters, owners, belongings onto the floor as possible. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember when I was looking through the images to find what I wanted to add to this episode. I, uh, <laughs> I keep saying things like, My water dish is empty these humans shall pay. <laughs> <laughs> like Little things like that, but they ended. They kept ending in these humans shall pay. So I guess in the game you take control of this cat and you wreak havoc. You cause some cat lateral damage. <laughs> 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 Alright, well cool. Well this is a really fun bouncy theme, like you said. And now we're going to go back to Cat Tales. And yeah. judging by the name mm. of this track, I'm thinking it's not a super upbeat bouncy theme. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's called the Mystic Theme. All right. We'll hear more about that after this cat game song. We'll be right back. <laughs>
That was the Mystic theme from Cattails. Yeah! Once again, composed by Tormod Garvin. And I think that is the prettiest song that we have played all night. I loved that. Oh. <laughs> that was really, really good. That was some, that was some what, Dusk? Some very good music. Woo! All right. The BGM podcast. <laughs> All right. So, what is the setting for this song in the game? So, um, in the game, this plays when you're under the temple mm. that's like in the middle of all the territories, and this is the temple is the place where like the forest spirit resides, and pretty much like the story of the game is. You're trying <laughs> to bring back the Forest Guardian because, Star Clan. yeah, <laughs> of course, none of them will probably get what that means. Yeah, I, I don't think that the people who read Warrior Cats and the people who listen to video game music have a whole lot of overlap. There. <laughs> <laughs> Except for this game. This game is just Warrior Cats. It really is. Um, if anybody likes like quick, easy to read little books and <laughs> also cats. Read. You should check out this series. There's like 75 books, and I'm not exaggerating. You should totally check it there out. There are a whole bunch of books. I have like 100 of them. <laughs> and they're still lot. making more. Yep, yep. But this is not a Warrior Cats podcast, although I know there are at least some out there. You want a Warrior Cats podcast? <laughs> hey, it's Shoot Kapow. Yes, it is Shoot Kapow, and it is also Cat. Yes, Shoot Kapow is petting one of our cats, Misty. We were just listening to the Mystic theme from Cattails. It was very pretty. Nice. Did you play Mount Magmeow yet? We did play Mount Magmeow. Yeah. Would you like to say a few words about it, even though it was like seven songs ago now? <laughs> uh, yes, Mount you... Magmeow is very good. It it was very good. Yeah. We enjoyed it quite thoroughly. Quite play thoroughly. Play it under us talking. <laughs> Bring it back up, like under us talking. It's very different from the Mystic theme. <laughs> But so you're supposed to bring back the forest spirits. Yeah, so that, that's kind of like Harvest Moon. I mean, I've Ocarina never played. Oh wait, oh I have played Harvest Moon. It was such a long time ago. Oh, though. Yeah, you did on the the 3DS. 3DS. Wow, also, Tale of Two Towns. I think I that barely one was. remember it. But yeah, at most Harvest Moons you're supposed to bring back the the like spirits, the the Harvest Goddess. But anyway. Yeah. Continue. But so you're supposed to bring back the forest spirit by collecting a bunch of different gems that are like hidden around the territories. Um, and so once you do that, you can build your own tribe and do the stuff like that. Tribe rushing water. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. You so can build your own tribe. Yeah, and as, you can take over the world. Yes, I did that actually. <laughs> um, I remember she started a Technoblade account. Yeah, Technoblade the cat. I'm Technoblade. Technoblade never dies. If I ask, y'all are just gonna say it's a meme, aren't you? Uh, no. Oh, it's what not is? A meme. What are y'all talking about? Clue our listeners in. What is? What? 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 Dusk, do you, Dusk what? actually made a Technoblade cat account on Cattails. I don't know what what are you referencing. Technoblade, Tec the YouTuber, that the Minecraft YouTuber. Once again, I don't know that the Venn diagram of our particular listenership and people who watch Technoblade has a whole lot of crossover. <laughs> and then if you cross that over with people who read Warrior Cats, it's probably even less. So. <laughs> I'm confused. What what do you need me to explain? Oh, so he wants I mean, to know and, and now we understand Technoblade is a Minecraft YouTuber. Yes. But how what does that have to do with Dusk's? Account I, I, just, I just made a Technoblade account where I an account named I, I made a cat named Technoblade. Oh, like the Technoblade. cat was just named Technoblade and it looks yes. like the Minecraft YouTuber. It's not like he has a certain style of game and then you modeled your game, your playthrough no. of that Cattails game on that. Yeah, so I thought it was... So, turns cat I thought it was in. deeper than just like a name and a look, but that's cool. Turns so, Cattails into Minecraft. He had another completely unrelated topic, but that garage programmer or something game. You know what? We'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> but uh, back to the matter so at hand. Not like a cattails nuzlocke or anything. Cattails <laughs> nuzlocke. All right, matter at hand. So you you, you save the the forest guardian. Yeah. So the forest guardian lives in the temple, mm -hmm. and the temple is where the mystic theme plays. And then there's a different theme that plays when you're outside of the temple, but still in the same like spot as it. And it's called the hallowed theme. It's pretty good. Ooh. 
You should check it out. It's pretty. All right. Well, I like this very much. This and is... now we're going to go to a track that could not be more different. I <laughs> uh, don't really have much of an intro. This is Blue Rose Ruin from Taiko no Tatsujin Wi Ketai Ban Zeami. Go! was Blue Rose Ruin from Taiko no Tatsujin Wi Ketai Ban Zeame. Oh wait, no. Ketai Ban. And it's composed by Zeami. Dang it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Taiko no Tatsujin Wi Ketai Ban. This was released in 2011 for the Wii. And it was developed and published by Bandai Namco. All caps. So yeah. Yo, Bandai. Yeah. I'm still here. Zeami is the composer. Please smash. And um, there's a really, really cool blog about the Rose songs that Zayami wrote for the Taiko no Tatsujin series. Uh, I'll link that blog in the show notes. This series has a really long history. It's been on lots and lots of different consoles. Basically, this series is a set of rhythm games created by Namco. The main objective of these games is to hit a simulated taiko drum following a chosen piece of music corresponding to notes scrolling from the right. So, like I said, it's it's a a rhythm rhythm game. game. Yeah. (laughs) The song is cleared when the spirit gauge is filled past the target by playing accurately enough. So, kind of like Donkey Konga, except... What does this have to do with cats? Well, on the screen, there are these little taiko drums that are, like, animated, and they totally yeah. have cat faces and cat ears, and so it counts. Sure. <laughs> Plus, this music. I had to play this music, because this music is... What is it, Shukapau? Very good music. Hey! I had to say the line at some point in the episode. Yeah. I, I tried to, like, have Dusk say it earlier, and then... I failed. It's a good thing. But, thing. but then just now, I tried it again, and Dusk did it. But right. Dusk can't yeah. just say very good music. She has to follow it up with a VGM podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> so what did y'all think of to take my what did y'all think of this track? Yes. Um, yeah. It, was good. it sounded. Bounce? It sounded like Undertale, and then it sounded like anime. Was it bouncy, Dusk? Yes. <laughs> is I don't, that an inside joke? I don't think it was very bouncy. Yeah, Dusk has said that about pretty much every one of my tracks up to this point. All of Dusk's have been very ambient and piano-y and stuff, and all of mine have been kind of bouncy, trouncy, fun, fun, fun. And so, yeah, you were making your the thinking noises. Thing about the only one. is that I'm the only one. Because you have to pack, I'm the only one. Because you have to pack all the shoes <laughs> in the one, like, segment here that you're in. Yes. <laughs> very good music. <laughs> all right. I had to say it again. Well, that is going to do it for this evening. Dusk, thank you for joining me, standing in for your sibling as my co-host tonight. 
even though Shukapau did come in and kind of crash the party here at the end. But that's okay, because we like having Shukapau around. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. And Dusk will be back again. Uh, maybe not but until season I? five of next season, but uh, at some season point. Season five of next season? Episode five Incredible of next season. Incredible grammar. Grr. It's not grammar. It's word choice. That's different. Episode um, five should be Toby Fox. I mean, probably, because do you know any other composers? Tormund Gark. <laughs> <laughs> Episode five is just cat tales. <laughs> you know Grant Kirk. Hope I talk about him all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't me know him personally. She she knows of the composers that we talk about, but I don't know that she could really like pick. No, whoa, whoa, Although you would only have to pick five tracks if it's the three of us. So. Yes, it will be the three of us because Toby Fox has incredible music. Does Toby Fox really have enough besides Undertale to fill up a whole podcast? I mean, there's one song from Pokemon. There's the entirety of that other game he composed that I know. And then he also. Co- he also composed. And there was also uh, stuff like before on town in his name. Yeah, oh yeah, like, the little town hero. Yeah. yeah. Also the the um, Earthbound okay. Halloween hat. Yeah. Yes, Earthbound True. Halloween. Okay. Hat. So the was, answer is yes. That was so. where Megalovania came <laughs> from. <laughs> we'll, we'll have plenty of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop. Okay. Now, uh, so we've got some things that we need to talk about. Uh, I have realized that if I'm going to fit 11 episodes in the season, which I have to because it's in Prof. Jeff's contract, he has to be on the 11th episode of every season, mm-hmm. then we're going to have to have like one episode per week for the rest of May and June. So, um, next week, we are going to be hearing from the Catlandia Catmandia himself, Ryan Steele. Uh, and yeah, yep, Shukapau will be back for that interview episode. We'll be back, and it probably will come, will go a little bit long, so just be prepared for that. After that, we're going to be talking about a series that is very near and dear to Shukapau, and Shukapau gets to pick the whole playlist for that episode. Pikmin, Pikmin. After that, we're going to take a little bit of a break and do something that's been a long time coming, and we're going to do a grab bag episode, where Shukapau and I are just going to bring a few tracks that we have heard over time that haven't really fit in any of our episodes so far, and please your ears with them. Yes. And then after that, we have a trio of tracks that we are going to bring. Um, Well, you know what? We'll talk more about that a little bit later, because we have a few episodes before then. Uh, I would like to thank all of our lovely patrons. Uh, links to all of their work is in the show notes. And, um, yeah, so Alex, Daryl, Ryan, Carlos, Skeletroy, Forrest, and the mysterious N- Nathan. The mysterious Nathan is still floating out there. Who thank died you recently. all so very Rest much. In peace to my white QRM. For your support. Uh, thank you also to our lovely artists, Naomi, Ruben, um, Carlos, again, and Ben, the Dyad Dishman, and Skeletroy, our theme song guy, who composed the awesome, awesome cat version of the theme song for this episode. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> the cat version? Oh yeah, it's not quite ready yet as we record this, so you're just going to have to hear it later. But okay. I imagine it's going to be something like meow, 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 meow. I could do that. There's a cat meow sound font on flat.io where I compose music <laughs> at Lloyd Irving for Smash. Please follow me. Yeah, they can also follow you at Chukapow on Twitter. Dusk, where can they find you and your artsy stuff? Nowhere. They can't? You don't want to share your Twitter yet? She doesn't do commissions yet. Okay. I do free commissions. That's all right. Friends. That's cool. One of these years, one of these days, perhaps. But you know what you can find on Twitter now? You can find this podcast. <gasps> and me, at Shoot Kapow. We have a Twitter. I already said that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Twitter. Uh, it is at VGM Pod. No idea how that wasn't already claimed, but I will take it. So, yeah, come join us. We're going to be talking a little more about the show on there. Um, you can find playlists of all of our episodes on YouTube. This is probably going to be the last like video that's going to have like a lot of pictures on it on YouTube. Um, I will probably still continue posting just like an audio with sort of a background for future videos, but I wasn't getting a whole lot of feedback on the videos themselves. I was still getting some YouTube comments, but now as we're transitioning to Twitter and 
other stuff like that. Um, you know, we're probably um, probably going to kind of migrate over to that particular area. We also have a Discord. Link is going to be in the show notes. And, yeah, so y'all come, find us, subscribe, listen. If you would like to be a part of our Patreon and help keep things running, keep the lights on, uh, you can find us at patreon.com, patreon.com, slash VGM, VGM. Uh, oh, Chukapow, you wanted to talk about a certain game that you heard about recently. Ah, uh, yes, the, the one I already forgot the full name of. Garage something. Garage something. Yeah, Nintendo released this game where you can like build games and code and stuff. It looks really cool. It's like something you yes. would enjoy, and maybe something that uh, like Lemon Boy could get into, um, mm-hmm. because it looks like it's built for several different ages, kind of like the Labo was. Mm-hmm. But I'm really interested in hearing more about this, so... We'll check it out. We'll see what kind of music it has. Maybe yeah. we could do like maybe you can do creative music. games one of these days, like that one and Mario Paint and like Dreams and stuff like that. And Minecraft. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Minecraft. Minecraft has a whole creative mode. <laughs> That's where I spent most of my time. I'll be, I'm going to be excited to see what people can make with it. Yeah, it really is going to be cool. But uh, I think that is actually officially going to do it thank you all for joining us this week and again you can tune in next week for our interview with ryan Steele, the composer of catlandia crisis at fort paw prince our blooper reel track for this episode is going to be from a game that was composed by the great jake kaufman however Ooh. this track was not composed by jake kaufman it was from written and performed by nada surf uh, a cool band and it was released for a 2000 game release for the DS and the Wii and some other stuff by Ubisoft. It was called Pets, Cats 2. Uh, anybody who played that game probably remembers this theme. It's really, really fun. It's called the Meow Meow Lullaby Remix, and I'm just going to have to let it speak for itself when the bloopers roll. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for us. So until next time, play very good games. Be very good people. And keep on listening to very good music. can't be like that. But I can't talk this evening. You can't talk ever on this podcast. <laughs> uh, that's where the blooper reel comes from. Just talk. I can edit it out. Okay. Um, and I can uh, splice it together to make it sound coherent. Yeah. But, you do have to look at, but you do have to look at the mic. So, we're going to... <coughs> <coughs> hairball. Sorry. <coughs> Uh, get it? Because we're talking about cats? Yes, you don't need to explain your jokes. I'm not stupid. Well, anyway, so... Um, Dusk, tell us a little bit. A little bit? <laughs> Dusk, be telling us a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Mr. Scotsman. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't do an accent because I'm embarrassed. Because uh, of all the millions of people listening to us. Pointed at you as if you were Chukapow and you were going to read it in your own track, but then I remember I'm reading the tracks. <laughs> okay, okay. Are we going to do it? Are we ready to go? What? Okay. Okay, now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Is that an inside joke? I don't think it was very bouncy. Yeah, Dusk has said that about pretty much everyone on my tracks up to this point. All of Dusk's, have, bouncy. All of Dusk's have been very, like, ambient and piano y. Stop bouncing the cat! Wait, but didn't you... Oh, wait, no. We finished last time on the submissions. Mm-hmm. And then I did my next track, which is this one. And then now you're going to do a track. So I'm starting? No, I'm leading us back in from that track. Oh. Okay. And then we're going to talk about, like, you're going to read your song. And I just recorded all that, so you're going to be on the blue reel. Yay! I'll be a great big kitty cat. Use open... Those to go from side